And hey, well, this is Francisco. We're on the Sure Doctor phone, and the latest MacBook Air ended up releasing last year with two different variants. And we're going to be getting the Intel variant, which was the first one that released earlier in 2020. And then we've got uh, the M1 versions of the MacBook Air, which released a lot closer to the holiday season. And both are going to be very great performers. And in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing MacBook Air and commenting on the M1 model since that's the most recent one. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The exterior design is going to consist of aluminum for pretty much the entirety of the build. This machine is incredibly light, but it is still very sturdy without a doubt. Apple's overall construction here regarding their laptops has certainly been improving over time with very little flexing on the chassis, for instance, and that is something that is just objectively true. Now, this laptop is going to feature two Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack. You're also going to find a pair of stereo speakers and a Touch ID embedded onto the power button, which is going to be a pretty cool feature and something that we certainly do miss on iPhones nowadays, but hey, at the very least, we do still have it on the MacBooks in order to keep that tradition alive. One of the best features regarding the MacBook Air is going to be its beautiful display. This is going to be a 13.3 inch laptop featuring a 2560 by 1600 retina display. It is a beautiful and very colorful display with a very sweet spot for sharpness, that is for sure. This display is great for content consumption and especially even for content creation due to how many colors it can reproduce and how accurate it is overall. However, this display does not get very bright, which is going to be the only downfall regarding it in my opinion. And now don't get me wrong, it does get bright overall, but I've seen brighter displays like on the Pro models for instance from Apple's own lineup, and that did become immediately apparent to me when I first got my hands on this laptop. So certainly worth keeping into consideration, but this is a very beautiful display without a doubt. And now let's go ahead and talk about the keyboard and trackpad. Now the MacBook Air is going to have one of my favorite combinations here regarding your navigation tools. So so let's go ahead and start with the keyboard first. Apple actually made the switch over to scissor switches from their butterfly switches of before. And now I'm one of the few people that do actually prefer the shorter travel of the older keys since they do kind of have a bit of a mechanical-esque feeling and sound to them. But this keyboard is still very good for typing for longer periods of time and the spacing is just right for a 13 inch laptop in my opinion. And now the trackpad is also going to be the best in class I would say. Thanks to the surface area being so wonderful it is going to be a glass trackpad after all and the overall feeling of the trackpad just in general and the fact that it utilizes haptic feedback instead of a physical click it does still feel very modern even to this day because apple is pretty much the only company that has been doing this in regards to their laptops so i do have to say that that is pretty cool and, and i do very much like this combination in general the speakers are also going to be very good for an ultrabook that is for sure and they actually get pretty loud and sound very clear for such a small package here which honestly didn't impress me quite a bit. But with that aside, I would like to talk about the overall performance, and it's going to be very snappy even with a ton of Chrome tabs open, for instance. And with something like Photoshop, though, you will get very good performance overall, and the display only comes to the experience of photo editing on this machine. And if you need a laptop for mid-level photo editing, then this is honestly going to be a very great choice if you ask me. When it comes to video editing, though, there are going to be plenty of reports saying that Final Cut Pro performs beautifully with the M1 chip, but that's just not really the case yet at least for things like Premiere Pro and especially After Effects for example. This laptop does still have its limits of course considering that this chipset just isn't ready to handle absolutely everything that's out there on the market unlike the Intel variant. However when it comes to battery performance you're going to get really good performance. Best in class probably. I regularly get around 15 hours of battery life even though it is actually rated for being able to last you even longer just considering that I believe you can get it at around 20 hours of battery life but like considering my usage with photoshop and things like that i do end up requiring more power than that so i do usually get like around 15 hours even then that is still very impressive i don't have to charge this laptop for quite a while upon using it this has actually been a pretty great improvement from the intel macbook airs even though those had a very great battery life i have to say that the m1 chip really does help when it comes to efficiency since it is made specifically to work with mac os and so what could improve about the macbook air so firstly a slightly brighter display would certainly be welcome here also i would really love to see an sd card slot or like a usb a port but 
I already know not to expect those things. Also, I didn't really talk about it earlier, but the webcam is pretty disappointing on this machine, so I wouldn't really recommend it if you need great built-in camera quality for calls or content creation if you're into using webcams for that kind of thing. And that's about it. And the MacBook Air is a fantastic laptop for more casual users or road warriors, I would say, who need long-lasting battery life without compromising on performance or general tasks. And this laptop gets a very strong recommendation from me if you need just that. But if you need a machine for professional work, unless you're doing photo editing at the most or maybe like drawing and things like that, I would honestly look elsewhere. So I very much hope that you like this review. Go ahead and leave us a like if you did and comment your thoughts down below. Also, do make sure to subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, enjoy.